Hi there, I'm Ian from LearnPracticalGist.com. Uh, in the previous video, I talked about pulling paper maps into your GIS using a digitizer. Today, I want to talk about um, pulling them in using a scanner. Now, once again, I can't overemphasize how important it is to be able to bring your own uh, mapping, customized mapping, into your GIS projects. Because well, not every map that's available off the shelf is actually suitable for the project that you're necessarily working on. So uh, some organizations have banks of people that do this, like little rooms full of people that do this. Some organizations might have been through this process many years ago. Some organizations might just be embarking on it. But whatever, I, th I think that it's very important, even if you don't do this in uh, as you know, occasionally in your work, you at least need to know how to do do this digitizing because it's a it's a painstaking, laborious pro, um, process that is just so worthwhile. And uh, you need to get over that. Uh, oh, you know, we've only got su such and such information in the organisation, so therefore we we can only produce a certain sort of map. No. So many projects are let down by poor mapping and um, decision makers are starved of good information because GIS um, people in organisations sometimes are just a little bit too lazy to uh, put their own information in. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, this is what a scanner looks like. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. It's a bit of an old scanner. Um, desk, the scanners these days uh, or can be flatbed like this. They can be drum scanners that are fairly thin and they're just uh, the scans just fed through. They could be a flatbed scanner even on your um, sitting on your desktop. And most of the work I do is via scanning, and I do a fair bit of field work. And the interpretations I do that require field work are usually on A3 bits of paper and I just scan those in on a flatbed scanner on my desktop. Something very obvious here for you to, to note with, um, with this example is note the crease in the map. Just be sure if uh, when you put your map on your flatbed scanner that it is, um, uh, that it is square. Uh, that will make it easier for you when you bring it into your GIS. Uh, GIS, but also um, uh, creases can bring in distortions into the mapping. So just make sure you've got a book or something sitting on the flatbed. So you bring this um, scan in, and I'm not going to show you this scan. I'm going to show you a scan from this other project that I've been working on, and the one that I threw on the board the other day. Um, that I use for that digitizing example. Here it is as a work in progress. Now, once you've got that scan, one really obvious way uh, to use it is to bring it into your GIS, georeference it, and that it, that means to put it into your uh, into a coordinate system within your GIS. Now, I need to suggest to you that it's really really important that you um, use the same coordinate system that you're using in other parts of your GIS because you, you'll find yourself in trouble. If you don't, you'll get displacement issues and, and, and so forth. I've had that happen to me a few times. And you scratch your head, you know, why is this thing 30 or 40 metres out? Or, you know, why is it so far off the map? Rah, rah, rah. That's one of the first things to look at. So the issue with this is that if I click on the information button here and we're using, I'm using Map Info Professional here, but it, this is only one of a number of GISs that I use um, in my business. Uh, and it just so happens that uh, this information uh, project, or for this project, I used Map Info. Anyhow, if I click on it, this is the information button, we're not getting any information, okay? because it is a dumb uh, image. Images are dumb in geographical information systems. They, they're visually okay, uh, but they are dumb. You cannot query them. You cannot query the information behind them. Another way to use this scanned image is 
to on-screen digitize with it. So I'm going to click on this create polygon button here and I'm just going to go over this area here and create a polygon. Okay, click, click. And you can see when I was, this is this identical, will be an identical outcome pretty much to if I was to use a, um, a digitizer. And what we've got here is every time I've clicked, we can see that we've created this thing that we call a node. All right. And um, we've created a polygon. Now, if I click on this polygon, voila, we have um, some information that can come up behind it. So uh, I'll just put in there, you know, revised poly, right? And I'll only do this very short because I know it's a small field. The point is that you can on-screen digitize and um, with your maps. Another approach, and I'm going to talk more about this uh, field work and how to bring stuff in from field work uh, later because we've got GPS points on here and, and so forth. Another approach is to vectorize your um, image. Now what we're looking at here is we're looking at a scanned image and we're running this through a program that vectorizes the data. In other words, it, it detects the, um, that th this is a linear feature and it creates a vector line on this. Now, what you end up with from these vectorization um, programs, unless they're really smart ones, and there are some really smart ones about, um, unless they're really smart ones, um, we'll just end up with a series of lines that will still need a fair bit of cleaning. Now what we're looking at here is we're looking at this lovely example of something that's been scanned. It's had beautiful crisp clean lines on it and so forth uh, and it's created these beautiful vectors. <coughs> but let me tell you, it rarely happens like this. Um, and in fact down here, you can see down here, at the bottom of the screen, this is a far more typical sort of a, uh, an issue that you're likely to come across. Um, you're likely to get uh, thinning and so forth where the ink hasn't been very dense on the map and um, it, it creates editing situations that you need to edit. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other problems that you have when you vectorize data. Okay, imagine that we've got a map with a road on it and a river on it. If we were to vectorize that in the same manner as we've done in this previous screen, it's unlikely, the vectorization program is unlikely to be able to detect that that is a river and that is a road. Some of them have color separation, um, but even so, you're there's going to be an editing situation here. So in this case, the river would be a complete line, but the road would be a, uh, a broken line because the river's going over the top of it. You would also find that um, as a blue line, blue as a color is not a very dense color, and um, that is going to create issues with the uh, quality of the scan being um, being not as good. One way around this that I've done on previous projects is to actually um, put tracing paper over the top of these, of, for example the rivers, and create a rivers layer, but do it with um, uh, in very dense uh, cartographic pens, ink pens. Sorry, you get a line that scans a, a, a lot better quality and, and vectorizes a lot easier. The other thing, if you're doing that, you need to do it on mylar, which is a, a stable base material. It's not affected by, uh, th you know, things like moisture and, and heat and so forth, so it won't crinkle. Okay, that's about all I can want to talk about today. If you haven't already, download your free ebook. Uh, get on my email list, and I'll email you that, uh, or give send you the link to that free ebook. 
I will um, also send you links to videos such as these because if you're not on my list, you've probably only accidentally come across this video. There's a whole series of them that uh, you won't be aware of. Okay, I'm Ian from learnpracticalgist.com. Go there, sign up. Uh, Courses.learnpracticalgist.com is, is another page you can sign up on. Okay, till we next meet. Bye for now.